Yeah, I, I think everything looks good. Wonderful. All right, well then, hello and welcome. Welcome to my kitchen and thank you so much for having me in your kitchen. I truly hope you are, uh, I was gonna say planning, but I will just say here and cooking with me. But if not, stick around because there will be plenty to do, plenty to chat about, and hopefully plenty to learn. A few housekeeping items before we dig into all these, this yumminess down here. Um, one, for viewing purposes, I should be pinned. So if you go to the top right of your screen, you should have options, I think, for speaker view and or gallery view. And if you're like me and you need <laughs> the full screen, especially as you're working with your hands, then you definitely want to click on speaker view. So that's item number one. Item number two, feel free to light up the chats. Uh, in fact, while I'm talking right now, I would love to know who's in the room. Tell me where you're from. And if you're in Colorado, tell me which city, which town. I would love to welcome you into the kitchen personally. Um, so there's the chat. And then there's also, if you look at the very bottom uh, stream there at the bottom of the screen, you'll see a raise hand option. Since we're on the webinar platform, if you raise your hand, then I'll know that you have an urgent need and we need to address that right away. With that said, if you can hold your questions to the end, I'd be super grateful because this lunch prep is actually gonna go really fast. And so we'll have plenty of time at the end to ask questions. But if we get in the middle of something, of course, I want you to feel safe and comfortable to raise your hand and say, hey, Michelle, can you do that again? Or say that one more time. And then lastly, we're gonna have some really fun polls to play with. So. Uh, if you haven't done the polls, then you're in for a treat. You have, If you have done polls on Zoom, you're still in for a treat. So let's see, I'm gonna look this way. Just know I'm still with you, but my chat box is over here to the right of my screen. Uh, let's see, it says Chris is from Lakewood. Hello, Chris and Jana or Jana from Colorado. Rhonda Rue from Denver, I'm so glad you made it. Great to see you, girlfriend. Yvette from Superior, Colorado, love it. About 15 minutes southeast of Boulder. Good to know because I am geographically challenged, but good to know you're up north. I'm here in Denver, so in case you're curious, that's where this kitchen is. Uh, we've got Norma from Colorado Springs. Welcome, Norma. Anne from Colorado Springs and Sheila from Colorado Springs. Wonderful, well, welcome. Again, so happy you're here and let's dig in. All right, and actually I said let's begin, but let me just double check. So I've got a chat box over here and a chat box over here. I wanna make sure I don't leave anybody behind. And again, I want you to feel comfortable and welcome to ask questions and comfortable and welcome in your own kitchen because I want your lunch to be as delicious and as nutritious as possible. So let's double check. All right, we got that. We got that. I don't think I said hi to Barbara from the Springs. Hello, Barbara, and welcome. So today we are making curry turkey bowls over a bed of cauli rice. Cauliflower is one of my favorite vegetables in the world. Not only because I just think it tastes good, whether it's raw, cooked, steamed, baked, sauteed. I, I cook it any way and every way possible, um, but because it is loaded in so many minerals nutrients. And before we get our hands dirty, let's do our first poll. Let me go to the bottom of my ribbon and see if it pops up for you. And I'm going to hit launch poll. So now you have the option to participate. Tell me, cauliflower is loaded with the following nutrient. Is it vitamin C? Is it zinc? Is it vitamin D? Or is it iron? I would love to know what you think and while you're voting i will just give you the hint we all need this vitamin right now as we are in getting ready to be an allergy season maybe allergies have kind of kicked up for some of us already and it also wards off colds so those are my two big hints for which nutrient that cauliflower is loaded with <laughs> i'll give you a few more moments i think the timer says 40 seconds going up or down? I can't tell if the timer is going. Oh, it looks like it's going up. So I guess we have 10 more seconds. Well, you can watch me <laughs> do the kitchen dance. Let's see, so far vitamin C is getting the most votes, followed by zinc, followed by vitamin D, and nobody said iron. 
can't wait to hear the truth. All right, here we go. I'm gonna end the poll and tell you the answer. I've got a super smart crowd with us because as I share the results, you're exactly right, vitamin C. So cauliflower is in the cruciferous family. That would be our broccoli, our Brussels sprouts, our kale, and all of them are loaded with vitamin C. And of course, fiber. So we wanna get the vitamin C and the fiber in our body as often as possible and as much as possible. So I'm leaning in so I can read the screen. So we have the first poll. All right, and now, Let's truly dig in. So cauliflower, when you bring it home from the store, oftentimes it's in that plastic. I get so upset with plastic, but I also know it's protective. So stores have to do what they do. And I actually personally shop at Sprouts and the cauliflower, the organic cauliflower that I buy, it does come in the plastic, but I will tell you, as soon as I get home, the moment I get home, I get plastic off. I chop it up into pieces that I know it's going to be the size that I'm going to cook that week. So if I'm going to do, like today, we're doing the rice poly, it's going to be uh, kind of just coarsely chopped. And while I talk about this, feel free, grab your cauliflower, either start chopping it first and then rinse it, or rinse it and then chop. But just so you know, we want the cauliflower when we're storing it in the fridge, we want it to be dry. Because when you see that uh, kind of brown, sometimes black uh, on the cauliflower, that is the mold. And the mold often comes from the water that's stuck in that plastic. So again, we wanna take that plastic off. We wanna cut the cauliflower into the pieces, the size that we know we're gonna cook with. We wanna put it in a glass jar and then put it in the fridge to store. So I did that earlier. And then earlier to save time because I knew I would start talking because when we start talking about nutrition, I just can't help it. I just get really excited and I definitely want to keep this lunch under the hour period <laughs> and also to give you time at the end to ask questions. So I chopped some up already. I moved it into my food processor. So pull out your food processors if you have one. If you don't have a food processor, no worries. Feel free to use a blender. If you do a, uh, like a regular blender, you probably want to only put half of the cauliflower in. And then if you don't have the blender and you don't have a food processor, still, no worries. Just chop it up finely. We're gonna um, try to rice it. And we'll, uh, the term when you're cooking, if somebody says to rice something, it just means you're cutting it or getting it chopped in a size, like a little grain of rice. So keep chopping, rinse it, get it in your food processor and or blender and or chopping it by hand. And I'm actually, I already poured some in my food processor, so I'm gonna rice mine. I will tell you, because I am working with limited space, <laughs> and I've got a, a limited cooktop here, um, I'm only gonna rice half of my cauliflower. And just a hip tip, if you do have the space to spread out in your kitchen, you also might wanna rice half, pour it into a bowl, and then rice the next. Because as you'll see, when we start pulsing it, we want to pulse it. We don't want to like shred it into smithereens. We just want to pulse it to get it rice. Um, sometimes it's hard for it to fall in and get all rice. So the easiest is to do half and half. But depending on the size of your food processor, you might be able to put that whole cauliflower in there. So here we go. And mind the noise, it might be a little noisy. So again, I'm going to pulse it to rice the cauliflower. And feel free to dance while you're rising. <laughs> a little shorter action. Alright. Alright, I'm going All right. And there you have it. So I'll show you. I'm gonna leave it in there because we're gonna leave it there for now. We're gonna actually cook it up while our curry is simmering. So hold tight, we'll get there. But for now, I'll just pull, pull out a little bit so you can see the texture. So you can see it just looks like little rice, little healthy rices, which I love. All right, so I'm gonna pour that in because I do not any kind of food waste whatsoever. And I will dry off my hand. And so next, let's jump into the 
I'm going to turn my stove on now because my stove takes a little bit of time to heat. But we are going to chop our onion first and then we're going to uh, cook up our meat and then we'll take it from there. One thing I forgot to mention during the housekeeping, if you have uh, needs to actually follow along with the actual recipe and ingredients, I believe if either it was emailed to you or maybe Allison will put it in the chat. But I know I have a handout for you that has all the ingredients and all the steps as well. And if not, we'll make sure to get that to you when this workshop is over. So, on to our onion. We want to take our onion. I already did a little bit because, again, I knew I'd get talking. Uh, so, I chopped half of it here. But what I wanted to share with you, and I know, especially looking at the poll, we already have professional nutrition slash chefs in the house. Uh, but just in case for those of us who might be a little bit more nervous and not as experienced in the kitchen, with the onion to chop it properly, you want to look at the side that's kind of like, I just call this like my straw man. Ooh, I can feel that heat. I'm actually going to turn that off for now. Um, the straw man side. So the side that doesn't have that straw on it, you want to cut it in half, or excuse me, just chop it off because you want that flat surface. And then once you have your flat surface, let me turn it this way because I'm right handed, you're going to cut that straw man in half, if that makes sense. All right, hopefully it does, but we'll move on to chopping. So now, of course, we want to take that hard skin off because nobody wants hard onion skin in their food. Hopefully that one is, uh, you know, have a little more natural reaction. I get all the fuzzy stuff off, put my magic bowl to the side. And so now that we have this beautifully cleaned and half onion, if you have a sharp knife, then we're just going to cut down the middle through the oven. <laughs> the oven. <laughs> How about the onion? And uh, if you don't have such a sharp knife, I'm lucky because my husband is very serious about his knife here. In fact, I often tease that this is the reason why I married him. <laughs> because he has an amazing knife set that I did not have before marriage. So, ours is sharp, so I'm going to cut down the middle. But before I do that, I just realized I am going to put on my onion goggles. <laughs> because, yes, I am a wimp. I do not mind telling you that cutting onions makes my eyes cry and I've tried all the things like I know I've heard that you spray rose water on your face that helps or if you dip the onions in cold ice water that helps or if you light a candle that takes away some of the sulfur and all that I mean it kind of helps but I'm telling you these uh, onion goggles they have changed my life so if you've got some ski goggles since I see most of us are here uh, from Colorado there's a good chance you have ski goggles in your closet <laughs> Try it on. Don't be silly with me. <laughs> so, before I chop into it, check in the eyes. All right, so I'm going to chop down the middle of this half of the onion. All right, so I just made a cut that way. And then next, I'm just going to go in the long way, kind of the lines of the onion. And with this step, I know in the recipe, I think I said a red onion or a white onion. I prefer white, or excuse me, yellow onion for this recipe, just because with the coconut oil that I'm about to use and some of the curry, I think it goes great. But the red onion, I think is great too, because that adds a little sweetness. If you have a red onion, awesome. If you have a yellow onion, awesome. All right, so now we're just gonna slice down, kind of following the lines of the onion. Wait. Now, we're going to go for the lentil. And that kind of looks like that blooming onion that you find at restaurants sometimes, which, you know, we won't talk about that because that's not really on the culinary nutrition uh, <laughs> scale. We're going to stick to dairy-free and gluten-free, and if I get 
get going now. This workshop will probably be about 20 hours. So I'll just tell you, that is definitely one of my food philosophies is eating plant-based, meaning most of the things on your plate are from plants and no dairy and no gluten. That's that for now. Sticking with this onion. All right, hopefully you're still chopping, chopping, chopping because we want this entire onion for this recipe. All right, and so now going horizontal, we're gonna keep selection and bag some. And this is all about getting the nutrition in our bodies. So there's no such thing as perfection. I want to make that super, triple, double, quadruple clear. <laughs> we want the perfection is in getting the nutrition in our body. So whichever way we can do that, let's get that. And let's see, I have another note from Allison that says, I will email the Oh, oh, I will email to everyone with the recordings and the other information from the previous presentations. Awesome. So there you have it. So uh, if you are looking for the ingredients and the recipe, you will be receiving that with the recording and that information from the previous sessions of the recording in your email box. All right. So once I get it kind of close, I'm going to turn it kind of flat. And then I just start chopping because I am not interested in chopping off my finger, so whatever makes it easier, <laughs> I encourage you to do that. Easy, peasy, breezy, what else rhymes with easy? <laughs> easy, peasy, breezy. I think that's probably all the positive words I can think of. It rhymes with that. And let's see. So now that we've got our onions chopped, and yes, I will be leaving the goggles on until the onions actually start cooking and some of that sulfur gets cooked out and I uh, will not be uh, brought down to tears. <laughs> I'm okay waiting for that. All right, so now I'm gonna turn the heat back on because next we will be heating up our turkey. And if I have vegetarian friends with me, depending on the texture of what you have, I will say, will determine whether or not you want to do this stuff with us. Um, the turkey meat we're going to cook because at the end when we're uh, sauteing the curry sauce, we definitely want the meat cooked already. But for some of the vegetarian options, if you have the tempa, you probably do want to heat it up a little bit. I don't want to heat it up as long as it's going to take for the turkey. Uh, but if you have tofu, that's going to be the texture. It's, it's so soft that you definitely can wait and put that in at the end. And if I forget to remind you, just, you know, raise your hand, give me a little nudge, say something in the chat. But I am working with turkey meat today. So I'm heating up my pan to about, uh, about medium high. I'm just going to give it a minute. And while this is heating, I think it must be time for another poll. All right, let's see what we've got in here. Maybe we should do a poll on, let's see if Michelle can figure out her polls. <laughs> oh yay, there we go, yes I can. All right, so because we are about to work with curry, I want to know from my audience, let's watch it now, these questions. Curry powder, where does it come from? Does it come from a curry plant, a curry tree, a combination of herbs and spices, or a bean that is grown in India? All right, I'll give you about 10, 15 seconds while I do my little dance. And you can clean off your onion fingers and type on your laptops, hopefully and let me know where curry powder comes from. All right, I'll give it five more seconds. I'll pull down my dress. <laughs> All right, we are going to end the poll. Let's see. Ah, interesting. So before I tell you the answer, I will just tell you that when I went to culinary school last year, I was actually surprised. And that's why I put this poll up because <laughs> it definitely makes me feel like I'm not alone. 
So I will tell you the answer, which I'm sorry this group did not get a passing A on. Some of you did, but it is a combination of herbs and spices. So for those of you who are cooking with me, or if you're not and you happen to be in your kitchen, let me your kitchen real quick, grab your jar of curry powder and just read the ingredients. Uh, it is, and actually I will tell you, the main ingredient in curry powder is turmeric, which is the goddess of all herbs. It heals almost anything and everything you can think of. And that's kind of why this curry has that coloring to it. But every curry powder is gonna be a little bit different, but it's almost always gonna have the turmeric healing powers, healing powers. I guess I'm trying to say powder and powers at the same time. So it's both healing powers and it happens to be a powder when it's ground down. So in mine, it has coriander, turmeric, mustard, cumin, fenugreek, paprika, cayenne, cardamom, nutmeg, cinnamon, and cloves. And actually, I'm curious in the chat if you'll let me know if there's any ingredients that I didn't say that you actually found in your brand of curry powder. I'll tell you again, I got mine at Sprouts, but you can find curry powder pretty much anywhere, food supers, uh, any store. So, sorry about that, I think I forgot to hit the share button. But this is how our group voted. So, if you got it wrong, okay. Now you know, now we all know. Curry powder is a combination and a mix of different spices, mostly aimed at healing our body, but also just tastes darn delicious. So, let's get to it. I will stop sharing there. Now let's close the polls. All right, so first, if you are cooking the turkey meat, again, if you have vegetarian options, you might want to wait till the end to add that. But if you're cooking the turkey, let's start. We're going to be at about medium high, and I'm going to put in about two tablespoons of coconut oil. You can also use um, olive oil for this one. Butter, full fat butter would actually be delicious and healing for our brains. And then ghee. Ghee is kind of a, a result of butter. We'll talk about that another time. Um, but that is healing and has some healing properties in it as well. These are all the healthy oils that are great to feed our brains. So it looks like my pot got a little hot before I start a little smoke alarm going off. <laughs> so I turn that down. And so I've got my coconut oil in and now I'm putting in my turkey. There we go. So we're going to saute our turkey and make sure all the pink is gone. And for this recipe, I believe I put a pound on the ingredient list, and that's what I have here, a pound of turkey. And this one happens to be organic. All of our meat and any soft fruits and veggies, we definitely want to get organic if possible. I understand that there could be a cost that goes to that or goes with that sometimes, but oftentimes not. In fact, the coconut milk that I bought for, uh, for today's lunch, it's organic and is exactly the same price as the regular. So, score! <laughs> One, I love saving money, but two, I most definitely love getting the healthy stuff in my body and in my family's body. So, all right, so while the turkey is sauteing, we're gonna pull out our snack piece. And yes, I hope the goggles aren't too distracting, but <laughs> we haven't put the onions in yet, so it's gonna, we're staying on for a little bit longer. Uh, so grab your snack piece. I already chopped up about half of them. But we want to rinse them, of course. Rinse your snap peas. And we're gonna just cut them in half. Also, we're gonna look for any of the woody ends and edges because nobody wants to be crunching the edges. Like, this edge, you can tell, it's still kind of a little bit fresh. So I'm gonna leave it on. So 
still have vitamins in it. But let me see if I can find one that I will definitely, this one looks a little gnarly. <laughs> and I love that it's natural. Let's see, there you go. Um, love that it's natural and it's probably great, but the texture's not gonna taste great. So right now I'm going to chop that off. And then I'm going to cut it in half. And so we want bite-sized pieces for our snap peas for this recipe. You take two or three at a time and just start chopping. And then of course, keep an eye on your turkey. Stir it when necessary mm -hmm. so that all the edges get some heat to it, you get cooked through. And also grab another bowl that you can pour this turkey meat in and or your vegetarian option because we're gonna use the same pot to cook up our curry sauce. Steve, I appreciate it. I'm like, why isn't it cooking? <laughs> it wasn't giving me enough heat. All right, so uh, again, get your bowl prepared. Try something about this size. As soon as the turkey meat's done, we're gonna transfer the turkey meat into the bowl and still use the pan for the curry sauce. So if you got all that, then just keep chopping these beautiful snap peas. Mm. I love these, and they're so crunchy, and they're great raw. Uh, I, oh, I couldn't help it. I think that one was calling my name. <laughs> I love the crunchiness of snap beans. That's like, these are awesome snacks to put in your lunch, especially those of us who are going to the office or leaving the house. You just rinse these, pop them in a nice, uh, small, maybe even like this size glass container. Pop up on your bag, and then you have a yummy, healthy snack to snack on during the day while you're working. You can add that with some baby carrots, some broccoli, and then of course, you gotta get a delicious dip of resin that hopefully has all of the healthy, or has healthy fats and ingredients in it. We don't want any of the preservatives. And again, I guess that's a conversation for another time, but I want you to get the nutrition in, and get the taste and the deliciousness in as well. All right. So I've got my snap peas cut. Ooh, I almost missed this kind of woody end. I'm chopping that off so I don't get the mean mud from anybody in my family. <laughs> Promise I'm not trying to choke anybody. I want this to be yummy. Again, keep chicken on your turkey, spread it around, and break it up into pieces just as you would ground beef or any other kind of ground meat. We want it brown, and again, we want to cook out the pink. We do not want sushi turkey. I don't even know. Is that a such thing? <laughs> Is there such thing as sushi turkey? I wouldn't know because I haven't cooked it, and I know it's never cooked that. <laughs> oh, I want my turkey meat cooked. All right, give that a few more moments. Do we have any questions at this point while we're sauteing and chopping? And our poly rice is still waiting for us here. We're gonna heat that up as we make the curry sauce as well. Another thing, if you're in your kitchen, uh, you can grab out any extra herbs you have. We're gonna use these as toppings. I can tell you we had chives for a dinner last night, and I was like, ooh, perfect. I am saving this for this afternoon's lunch. So, mm, yum, love the chives. Love anything green because of course, the fiber keeps our digestive tract on track and also the iron and the chlorophyll and about a thousand other <laughs> reasons why we wanna eat our greens. Just like our parents told us when we were little, that part hasn't changed. <laughs> And I hope we're just finding newer and yummier ways to prepare those vegetables. All right, so my turkey meat is cooked up. I'm 
going to turn off the stove for now. And I'm just going to transfer it in to the side bowl. And again, none of this has to be perfect. And feel free to leave some of that tricky juice in the pan and or bring it over with you. Either way, we're going to still use the same pan. And we're not going to rinse it because we want some of that yumminess to come and cook into our curry sauce. Now it's getting a little bit hot, so I am going to put that down and just scoop it. Let me see if this is cool enough for me to hold on to. Okay, we are in luck. It is. I'm just going to shimmy, 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 shimmy this uh, turkey into the bowl. I'm loving this um, wok, which is relatively new to me, but it's really heavy. <coughs> Excuse me, I think I swallowed a snap pee down the wrong way. <laughs> well, pardon me, just one moment. Whew, okay, much better. All right, so now we are gonna put our same pot, and actually I'm gonna just kind of move this meat out of the way. But not too far, because we're gonna need it momentarily. Now we're going to cook up our onions. So I'm going to put my heat on about medium high. Maybe closer to medium to saute the onions. I'm again going to use the coconut oil and I'll pause really quick because I know I kind of whisk by the healthy fats that we need to feed our brains. The healthy fats that we want to cook with our avocado oil, coconut oil, full fat butter, ghee, um, olive oil sometimes. I try not to cook olive oil at high heat because it does kind of change the um, elements, but I will use olive oil in um, maybe like to top something in a salad or, or vinaigrettes or any kind of topping is fine. You just don't want to get it that hot. But I love coconut oil because it is antiviral and anti microbial and antibacterial. I'm going to do about two tablespoons. You can never have too much. And if you don't love the taste of coconut, because it does kind of have a coconut flavor to it, no problem. You can use your ghee, use your avocado oil. Avocado oil essentially has zero flavor to it. So I like to use that when my flavor profile is a little bit more specific on the food, then I'll use the avocado oil. All right, so the pot is ready. It is hot, hot, hot. I'm gonna turn down the heat a little bit because we are just gonna saute the onions lightly. We don't wanna burn them. We don't wanna crisp them. We just want them sauteed. So now your beautifully diced onions are gonna go in. And we're gonna sprinkle some sea salt. Fun fact, sea salt has the same pH level as our blood. So, you definitely want to choose the sea salt over the table salt that often is made out of chemicals. And now we're just gonna saute it up. If you still have turkey in the bowl or in the pot, no worries. It's all gonna end up in the same place eventually. So move that salt and onion around, make sure Every side gets coated. And you know, if they start flying out of the pan, <laughs> no worries. We're just gonna keep it moving. Keep this last leg open. I'm spreading them out in the pan so that there's enough space for all of them to get their teeth. See, I can leave this here for now. And then, reading my instructions, just wanna make sure I'm not gonna miss anything. So yeah, we're going to give the onions about two more minutes. We want them a bit translucent. Again, I don't want them crispy. I don't want them burnt. <laughs> I just want them a little see-through. Also, while we're waiting here, I'll give you a little plug. We will be back with, um, excuse me, with AARP on June 3rd. It's a Thursday at 6 30 and we'll be making some crispy, gluten-free, orange chicken. 
one of my favorites, or the sesame chicken is one of my faves. And that actually is going to go over a bowl of holly rice as well. So if you join us, you'll already be a step ahead of everybody else in the room since we're learning how to make our holly rice today for our lunch. All right. So while the onions are simmering, you want to open up your can of coconut milk. Again, like I said, I prefer organic. I got the organic kind. I've only found it in a can. If you are a lucky one and you know where to find full fat coconut milk that's not in a can, please let me know. I, I love to change that up. Um, and also grab your broth. I'm using a chicken broth, but for this recipe, you can also use a veggie broth. A beef broth would actually be really delicious. If you don't have either, uh, just substitute it with water. You'll be fine because these seasonings the curry powder will definitely take over. Let's see. And now Allison just said, keep an eye out for a mailer or email for registration for the next Eating for More Energy in June. Or you can check out our event calendar at aarp.org forward slash Colorado. There you go. We've got our event there. So I hope you all can join me for that as well. Okay. So your onions are getting translucent and let's move on to actually making the curry sauce so we can get all of these beautiful healthy nutrients in our body so first actually let's do the coconut milk first i want to warn you uh so if you have a can like this that the fat typically raises to the top and then there's a ton of liquid at the bottom so i did learn the hard way that <laughs> when you pour it if you just burp, it will fly everywhere, so take it from me. Take your time. Maybe grab a spatula or a spoon and just do a little bit at a time. And you'll see what I mean once you start going. See that gorgeous liquid? And this coconut milk is another beautiful healthy fat that feeds our brains, keeps us sharp, helps us to balance our moods. Even a great hormone balancer. Anytime you can get the coconut milk in, your body's going to thank you for it. So there you go. So, the heat is still on. Yep, medium high. Beautiful. And then I'm going to pour in my half cup of chicken stock. And I'm just going to stir it. The coconut milk can get a little, or can be a little chunky until it really heats up and then you'll see it'll be a nice liquid. All right, and then once that's smooth, we can move on to the spices. Uh, some people, oh, and you know what? Onions are cooked, so I can take these off. Let's see, is it safe? It's safe! <laughs> no crying today! <laughs> Thank you! All right, so we've got the coconut milk in, we've got the broth, we've got the onions. Next, let's put in the curry powder. Some people think curry, and depending on what's actually in, remember, there's a ton of different spices in here, so read your labels, make sure it's spices that you actually like. Um, but some people find it really spicy, and I don't know if it's the brand or what, because this is not spicy to me, so I'm gonna go ahead and put in the full three tablespoons. But if you find that yours is a little spicy, and you're, you know, if you're smelling it, maybe put a little finger in to taste it, then just kind of step it up. Like maybe do one tablespoon, see how that tastes. If you think you need more, do two tablespoons. And I just want to kind of eyeball about three tablespoons here. Because we love curry in our house. And then we are going to add a little bit more sea salt, bam, and some black pepper. And I understand that some of us have black pepper allergies. Leave it out, no worries. It'll still be delicious. All right, and now we're just going to stir it all together. You'll see this gorgeous yellowish color coming out. Unless, of course, your curry might have some red pepper flakes in it, and then maybe it's going to be a little bit more red and yellow. 
and or if you have green peppers in your curry, it's going to be more green than red. I'm just going to stir it together. And now I'm going to turn the heat up a little bit higher because we're going to want some of this liquid to, uh, to cook off. And that process is going to be about three to five minutes. So good. How are your kitchen smelling right now? Are you smelling the onion? Are you smelling the curry? Are you smelling the coconut oil or the butter or the turkey? I would love to know what aromatherapy is happening in your kitchen. yet, but while we're waiting, while we're chopping and stirring and cur um, <laughs> curring, <laughs> that, that's a new word, <laughs> curring, um, let's do a new bowl. How about that? So our third and last one, I kind of gave you a ton of hints about this next one, but let's see how this group does. Let's see, launch, bowl. Here we go. So, what is turmeric good for? Is it good for preventing heart disease? Is it good for preventing Alzheimer's? Is it good for, I'm sorry, I'm my glasses on, <laughs> improving symptoms of depression? Which one would you guess? Or all of the above? You look at a little dance while we're doing this. <laughs> All right, I can't help myself. I love that we had music therapy earlier. I'll be your dancing and cooking therapy over here. <laughs> All right, so yes, let me end the poll and let me share the results this time. I've got a very smart meme because yes, it is all the above. So even our friend who voted for preventing heart disease, yes, you are right too. And that is why I love turmeric. I try to put it in everything. We put it in our egg scrambles. Sometimes I'll sprinkle it, sprinkle it over a salad. I often put it in our vinaigrettes uh, and salad dressing. So anytime you can get that turmeric in, go for it. All right, so we'll stop sharing there. And now let's get to our kali rice. So the kali rice literally takes two minutes to saute after the rice it. My cooking surface over here, as you can tell, is a little bit small, so I'm only going to cook part of the half of the head of cauliflower that I rice over here. I'm going to turn the heat up to about medium high, closer to the higher level, because again, we're really just sauteing it. And I know people who actually eat kali rice raw, so if you like it raw, kind of more of a crunchy consistency, that's great too. I find that eating, or excuse me, heating it and cooking it and sauteing it, especially getting a little bit more of that healthy fat in, for me it helps my digestion and it helps uh, the digestion go down a lot smoother. So that's why I prefer to cook it, but again, go with what you like. You just want to make sure to get that nutrition in your body. All right, so I'm going to, so again, I turn it to about medium high. I'm still going to stick with my coconut oil for this one. And maybe do my camera a little bit so you can see this. And I apologize, it's probably a little bit hard to see the little pan, <laughs> kind of fit next to the big pan on the stovetop, but hopefully you have a full on stovetop and you have space for full size curry over here. And then hopefully full size uh, saute pan for your kali rice. I'm just going to let the coconut oil melt over here. And ooh, that curry sauce is just a nice simmer. We're just going to let it cook down on its own. You're welcome to stir it if you want, but it's doing its job just sitting here cooking on the stove top. And now the oil is melted for the kali rice. 
I'm just kind of spoon it into the skillet. To your body. All right. Now I'm going to take a fresh and clean spatula. I'll just kind of stir it around again, making sure that every side of each piece of rice, rice cauliflower, gets the boil on it. And then I personally like things a little bit salty, so I'm going to add salt. I'm going to add pepper but go at your liking and your preference because I think it also tastes delicious on its own, especially if you're using full fat butter. That butteriness doesn't necessarily need any more sea salt. So I'm gonna add it with a little bit more flavor. And then some pepper. Oh. And then stir that all together. And again, listen to your intuition. If you prefer uh, softer rice, then you're gonna wanna cook it longer. If you prefer a crunchier rice, or as they say in chef's school, al dente, then eat it raw or just do a little flash fry for like 30 seconds to a minute and it'll be warm and delicious too. I'm gonna let both of these just sit there for one moment. Are there any questions at this point? I'm looking at the that box right here. amazing lunch. I'm going to give my holly rice just one more stir around. I'm going to leave it on the heat so that it stays, or excuse me, I'm going to leave it on the cooktop so it stays a bit warm, but I'm turning the heat off because I don't want it too soft, but I don't want it too crunchy either. And now with our curry sauce, go ahead and Give it a little stir. Now we're gonna pour in our turkey meat or our vegetarian option. This is a good time to get those flavors melded together with the protein. I'm gonna do it away from me so I don't splatter any of these hot, beautiful ingredients on my body. Get it all in there. Lovely. Now just mix it all together. We want everything melted for all the flavors, all the texture. Excuse me, Michelle. Yeah. There's a couple of questions in the um, question and answer. Um, they want to know, is it okay if they put the cauliflower in the sauce? Ooh, that could be delicious. Absolutely. I think that would be lovely it'll give you a different texture of course but you'll still have all the amazing nutrients coming in so yes that's a great idea and, and then Bar barbara says that it looks like it's a great company meal oh i love that and when you say company what do you mean by company meal do you mind with for company like yeah. to share Oh, with gas. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Barbara. Absolutely. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> You're exactly right. Because as you can see, very simple ingredients, very easy. You could have people around the kitchen and talking to them while you're kind of throwing things in. So you're exactly right. Thank you. It's an excellent company meal. I work in corporate America as well sometimes. So that's exactly what my brain went with company. <laughs> I much prefer your use of that word. Thank you. All right. 
So, and now that I see, this is a different checkbox. Awesome, thank you for getting my attention over it there. I really appreciate it. All right, so we've got the turkey and or vegetarian protein in our onions and curry and sea salt and a black pepper mixture. The last step is our nut peas. And again, I'm pouring away from my body. I don't want any splatter coming this way. I'm gonna give that a good mix. And I prefer my snap peas crunchy, so I'm not gonna cook these for very long. Again, listen to your intuition. If you want them softer, cook them a little bit longer. often make this for dinner because again I work outside of the home during the week but if I were working more here my kitchen and have more time this would definitely be an awesome lunch that I would look forward to. So I did poly rice on the bottom, spoon my curry turkey on top and now because I have these extra chives, if you have any extra herbs, whether it's cilantro or parsley or dill, basil, you can even chop up some spinach or kale and put that on top. And you have a gorgeous bowl to eat your lunch. And another thing that I love about this recipe is because the flavor is so rich, over time, they just kind of melt and get even deeper and yummier. And so this will be an awesome dinner for tonight, lunch for tomorrow, dinner for tomorrow even. And there you have it. I'm actually gonna taste this while we're still together. Let me see how we are doing on time. Oh, we're actually right on time, or at the time. <laughs> so let's see if I can have another pea without choking on it, and then I'll cook. <laughs> I hope yours is as good. Thank you so much for joining me. And again, come see us on June 3rd. I would love to have you back in the kitchen with me. Yeah, thank you so much, Michelle. This was fantastic and looks absolutely delicious. Um, and I just wanted to take a minute. Oh, sorry. We have a question. Hold on. Okay. Um, oh, the chat box is disabled? don't know how that happened. Oh. Huh. Weird. Um, well, if anybody has any questions, go ahead and put them in the, um, in the question and answer that is located at the bottom there. And we will answer them real quick before we leave. Absolutely. And I just want to take a minute and say thank you to everybody for joining us on this Mother's Day weekend. Um, and I'm so glad you were able to take a little bit of time for you. Um, our hope is that you're feeling a little bit more connected to you, mind, body, and soul, that you can take this connection and continue it on from year to year. And um, 
please feel free to let us know your thoughts about the presenters as well. Um, shoot us an email. And you guys, we will be sending out an email to everybody with um, recipes, um, some of the presentation links, uh, and then also the recording for Michelle's, for this presentation, Michelle's presentation, and then the other presentations that were on the other uh, link there. So um, also, please just keep an eye out. Um, this is the first of many partnerships between AARP and YMCA Pike uh, region. I know um, this fall we are also planning a yoga retreat, which hopefully, with a little less, we can be in person for that one. Um, so keep an eye out for that. And I think you have one more question. Oh, just a thank you. You are welcome, Kathy, and thank you so much for joining us. All right. Thanks, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, and um, we'll see you soon, I hope. Bye-bye.